Hey everyone, how's it going? I am in Dubai and I am here for a mastermind and today I want to quickly share something with you that I've learned um, over the last few days. Um, something that I had never even thought I would think. Um, it's about money, it's about income, it's about like business and all that stuff. Something that I've just realised and I'm hoping that it helps you. Um, just to give you, I don't want to give you too much of a tour of this Airbnb because as you know I'm not one to sit here and flex. But it is actually quite a nice space so I've got a view of the sea here. So I'm on the Dubai Marina. I don't know how well you can see that, um, but I've just got this beautiful sea view. Um, we've got like a little balcony out here. It comes out and you can sort of, you can see some pretty cool stuff like the city, but it's nice. Um, don't worry, I'm not moving to Dubai. Um, I don't know why you'd worry too much about that, but it was something that a lot of my friends and family at home were like, oh my God, are you gonna move? But I did decide against it in the end. Um, for some personal reasons that I won't dive into. But what I have realized is that there is something good about moving to Dubai. And I also don't want to be blinded here. I'm wondering, let's put, let's put this up here and we'll, we'll see how we go with the video. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna edit this out. We're just gonna keep it organic. Why the hell not? If I pull this curtain, is it a little bit more bearable? Let's have a look. So, so, Mm, the lighting's not great. You're gonna have to put up with it, it's fine. There's a, you, you can see my Tabasco sauce and chopped tomatoes behind me. Basically, I've been eating at restaurants for the last like four days. Um, restaurants are great, but I believe that they should be um, the exception, not the rule. So I've had basically like lunch and dinner. I don't really eat breakfast, lunch and dinner in Dubai for the last like three or four days. Too many like seed oils and too much like salt and desserts and stuff. So I've I bought some stuff just to make rice and vegetables, just so I actually feel like I've got some level of nutritional value inside of me. Anyway, that was quite a long introduction. I hope you're well. Um, so I've learned one thing from being in Dubai because I've never, I haven't been to Dubai before. I haven't really traveled outside of my home country too much. Um, for the last seven years, I've been building some companies that do seven, multi seven figures. And I've done all of that without really leaving my house. <laughs> Uh, or leaving my country at least. I haven't really networked, I haven't been to masterminds, and this was my first mastermind. All of that to say, I realized how insignificant my wealth is. Um, now this isn't like a virtue signaling, like, oh my God, I'm so humble, and like everyone's better than me. What I mean by this is I've come to Dubai and I've been humbled by the amount of wealth around me. Um, now this is something I'll experience if I go to London, Paris, any sort of capital city in the nice parts, the nice central parts, you're gonna find there's a lot of wealth. But coming to Dubai, like I make 500 grand a month, right? So I've, my, my business with its current run rate is probably set to net maybe four, $4.5 million this year, um, like profit. After tax, we're looking at maybe like 3.8, something like that. And the, the funny thing about money, and you'll learn this as you make more, is that the more you make, the less it impresses you. And I've got a pretty decent cash position in my business. I'm safe, I'm sound, I'm financially secure and free. But when you, like if I look down, down the apartment now and I look down to the road, I will see my net worth drive past in cars in about five minutes, if that makes sense. So if, if you know, maybe not five minutes, maybe about an hour. You know, you get enough Lamborghinis, SVJs, Euruses, Rolls Royces, Bentleys, going up and to and from the palm. And you know, I look like I can look across to like the skyscraper next to me, and like you know, maybe five of those apartments is my entire net worth or something, right? Depending on how much they cost. There's something to understand about money. It's very abundant. Money is very abundant, and I've just been very humbled, <laughs> for lack of better words. I've realised that although by general societal standards or by general cultural standards. By the, by the mean of society, by the average person. I do very well for myself. I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have built the company I've built at such a young age. But it ain't shit. You know, like I was at this mastermind and I was talking to some people making more than me, some people making less than me. It's not about the money, but I sort of just came to the conclusion. I realized like, man, I'm really nothing. Like, you know, I've got like a little, you know, 5 million a year SME. <laughs> Um, for lack of better words. Although the net is pretty significant. I was talking to, um, I was talking to an accountant, his mastermind, and she was saying like, um, I won't name names, but one of her family members um, has a business that I think does like, I think 20 million a year, like multi eight figure manufacturing business. And she was saying like, well, you will net 
doing five mil a year, the same amount he's gonna net at 20 mil a year. So the cool thing about these info businesses and these marketing agencies is we are extremely fucking profitable. And when you explain like what you do um, and how your business works and operates to like a standard traditional business person, they'll be like, what the actual fuck? Like, how are you keeping so much of that money? Um, so you, you can sort of, it goes both ways. But all of that is to say that, you know, I've just basically concluded that five million a year is nothing. And if I, you know, here's the thing, what you celebrate becomes what you limit yourself at and what you cap yourself at. And it's a pretty important mindset distinction to make. Um, to, to you, 500 grand a month could be your dream. And that's fine. But I promise that once you get here, it's not all it's made out to be. Because I've been through the whole car thing, the watch, I never really went down the watch route. I've done the traveling, the financial freedom, and you get pretty much whatever you want with that sort of money. Within reason, you can't buy a yet, a yet or a job a jet or a yacht, but you can, fly, you can fly business where you want, you can go where you want when you want, you can hang out with awesome people, you can pay for dinner without even blinking. There's shit like that, you know, it feels good. However, to build real wealth, you, you need more than an info business. And so I've realized that my business is, is, is constrained pretty significantly to probably multi eight figures. Um, I think to do, so I want to be like a billionaire, right? And I'm not gonna be able to do that with an info business. And so I've been looking at people in Dubai and I'm like, when you look at business through the paradigm of the info biz world, 500 grand a month is, is a lot of money. A million a month is a lot of money. Like the pinnacle of info business right now could be like Cole Gordon, who's like 30, 40 million a year. And that's sort of like the knives edge of, of info business world. And this online space, that's like the, the holy grail. It's like 30 mil a year, you know, you keep 10 mil a year, you've got 30% margins or something. Um, but it's not about making the money, it's about what you do with it afterwards. So I've had some huge paradigm shifts um, just this weekend in terms of investing the money, in terms of what to do with it, because it's, I've realized it's not about like, it's not about making it, it's just about not losing it. And I'll tell you what, Dubai is a financial graveyard. Um, not in the sense that like you lose money if you move to Dubai, but obviously you're supposed to save it if you move in tax. But Dubai, if, if I moved here, it'd be a massive distraction. I'd probably be doing it more out of ego. I'd, I'd buy really expensive cars. I'd buy all these watches. I'd go on, it'd be, it would distract me from the main thing, which is just generating cash, to now buy property, which is my next move. If anyone has any good property advice or knows good property investors, by all means, hook me up, because um, that's the next move for me now. Like, you have to ask yourself, like, what is, like, what, what's the 30 year goal? Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you want to do what outcome do you want to achieve in 30 years time? You have to think in 40 year, 50 year time horizons now. So my, my goal and my sights are set on the status of billionaire, not because I want to be a billionaire so I can do what, like you get the point. I don't want to be a billionaire for the sake of the ego and the narcissism. I want to be a billionaire so that I can say I'm a billionaire because that's the height of the game. I think you play the game and you, you, it's kind of like prestige levels. You're playing Call of Duty, for example. All I've known is gaming. I've grown up with gaming. So I see business in the same way where you know, 10 grand a month, you know, like a grand a month is like novice, 10 grand a month is like apprentice, 100 grand a month is like, a, like intermediate, you know, a million a month is like, I don't know what you'd call it, like expert, and then 10 million a month is like master, and then 100 million a month is like, I don't know, I, you, get, you get the point, like God or something like that. Um, but it's made me re it's made me realize like 500 grand a month really what you, it, it's not you can you can buy anything you want personally with that but when when you transcend the need for personal gain financially it becomes more about building things and in my opinion for my personal psyche it, it, I can derive far more meaning by building something with my money than just spending it and I was thinking about the Dubai thing and the move to Dubai and you know, you save the tax and all that stuff. But then it sort of hit me. I was like, all of these really super successful, successful billionaires that I look up to don't live in Dubai. There's billionaires in Dubai. Don't get me wrong. Loads of them. Dubai is an incredible place to live. It's beautiful. It's very well designed. It's like, it's, this, it's the, the most incredible blend of the West and the East put together. Um, everyone's amazing. The crime rate is low. It's beautiful. It's sunny. I love it. I love it. It's like, it feels like a second home, even though I've been here for three days, but I wouldn't move here because I feel like my ego would go too, too crazy. I get too distracted from the main thing, which is the company. Um, anyway, this wasn't a video to necessarily give you advice. This was just more for me to like get something off of my chest and sort of just share what's on my mind with you and just, you know, keep it real, man. Hashtag peace. Gotta make myself cringe sometimes. Um, 
But 500 grand, it's, it's like, if you're making 10 grand a month, it's, it's not much money. Now it's a lot of money because it, it helps you achieve your financial freedom and the shit you want to achieve. But I was talking to Bo, my business partner, and I, I understand it's easy, to, it's easy to lose perspective because I understand 10 grand a month for most people is life changing. But that, that's all it is, it's life changing. It doesn't change anything, it, it won't change anything else except from your life, right? So if you want to change the world, 500 grand a month doesn't help you do that, right? See the point? It's like, if you're making 10 grand a month, it will change your life. But if, you, if you're making 10 million, 100 million, a billion a month, then you can change the world. And once you've changed your life and you're happy with it, there's not much point in making more money because you can't change it too much. You can optimize your life and I promise you, past a certain point, money will not bring you more happiness. And that sounds like common sense, but usually you have to go through it to truly understand it. Because if you're really unhappy right now, you probably expect money to fix a lot of your problems. But once those problems are fixed, there's not much else you can do, man. Like I, I wear a $30 Casio watch. I don't need a Rolex. I, I wore Crocs to this mastermind and my whole outfit cost $100. And I was going to these fancy restaurants in like baggy t-shirts and shit. I don't need fancy clothes, man. Like I'm happy, I'm content, I feel good, I feel confident. And in order for me to move the needle and do what I want to do, I just need to focus on the business, not on saving huge amounts of tax or driving expensive cars, although I do have a C63, so there's a little bit of a contradiction here. I'm not perfect, but I wanted to share this with you. I don't know if it helps you at all, it might not, but if it gives you some inspiration, um, then I hope it does. Everything, have a good day.